Great. Uh, it is Wednesday, July 5th at 5.15. And the Board of Assessors are meeting in the Town Hall. Present we have uh, Lee Whitcomb, Russell French, George Forcier, and Laurie Lucier. And first order of business is always to review the meeting minutes from last time. Laurie did make them available nice and early online for us. Thank you. Yes. I even read them. <laughs> They're on the website? Molly, I'll lay down. I'm sorry, George. Okay. Want me to lock her back up? Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you, can get that one. you want me to lock her back up? No, she's fine. <laughs> she just has to get it. Oh, yeah. Get her greeting in. And it's nice to have you with us this time, George. Well, instead of just remote, it's yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Sorry, you're going to have another year of teaching a new guy. That's work. fine. We also have your certificate of completion of course 101, which is is wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to frame and put on the wall somewhere, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. And then we all had a chance to review the minutes? Yes. Okay. Wait, so printed. Hey, okay, a second? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? Uh, yeah, discussion or questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, vote on our motion to accept. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Next, new mail and notices and invoices, I should say. We have several invoices um, to approve, and then Laura will put together the package, you know, as a, a unit for my signature. Um, the first is our fiscal 24 bill from Tyler Technologies. And as quoted, it is uh, has was quoted to us in the fall, it is the same figure of $4,061.41. We are budgeted for that amount. Uh, what we usually do is we initial our approval mm -hmm. of them and then we go from there. Um, these are two Okay, these are two bills from Cartographic. There's an annual bill for uh, two of the modules that we have added to our um, uh, software, one being document upload support renewal and the other being advanced query support renewal. Um, and they are each for $500 for the year. Again, known, planned, budgeted. The last one to come is a Bill for annual membership from the Massachusetts Association of Assessing Offers, Officers. This year, they've changed, changed their usual method of doing it, whereby they used to bill for all three of us on one page. They're now doing each person individually, and I've only printed out mine. It's $75 a piece. And we, in the past, if we felt constraints in our budget, have had just one of us. Uh, be a member, but I do want to check because they have some good educational programs, George. Their residential is very good. Uh, they also do an annual program in, uh, in Amherst at UMass every August. It's a full week and it's expensive and you are in there eight hours a day and come out sort of shattered but knowing everything and with great background material, great networking. Yeah. It's a it's a 
real asset to the to the assessing business. Uh, I haven't been in a number of years. I uh, think they offer very good programs. So we might want to look into that if you are interested. If there's still time to sign up, but as long as it's after July fifth. Oh yes, <laughs> it's usually a first full week of August. But uh, and then the next week they do the same types of programs for tax collectors and uh, mm -hmm. uh, treasurers. Yeah. So, so presumably I can online mm -hmm. the yeah. state association. Yep. So I'll dig down through it because I may have to add your name to our town. Yep. Um, I can plan to do that tomorrow. Did you get the data coll collection manual? No, not yet. Well, actually, I haven't looked. So oh, okay. Did you send my email? I did. Yeah, yeah just after you left earlier. So it should be there. Okay, uh, so I submit these four bills for approval for payment and uh, ask that you look them over and at least initial them that you have seen them, and then we'll vote on them. Looks like I got it's pretty good size. Update back in this. Yeah. Our data collection. Manual. There it is. All the signatures from the upper right hand corner. Yes. Yeah. Um, we're just signing yours. We'll say there's going to be. I do. So probably, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It hasn't gone up in price, which is nice. Good in time. Mm -hmm. Their courses are not inexpensive either, but we do have some money in our education line. So I move that we approve these four bills for payment, front payment. I'll second that motion. Okay. Have we any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. Under new mail, we do have a couple of things. Um, one is a notice from Eversource that they are withdrawing the appeals that they had filed with the state appellate tax board regarding their personal property values in a number of communities, basically most of Massachusetts. They had disagreed with the um, state's method of calculation and had appealed as a class action against all the towns. So that's good news. That's very good news. Several years ago, we had to settle with them and it was about $3,000 and something for a five year um, situation. So that's, that's a nice, nice piece of mail to get. We also have a return on our sales verification form for the buyer of Wildside Gardens, Cottage and Gardens, Sue Bridges place up there. Uh, Sue is continuing to live there. Mm -hmm. And this, we send a, a verification form to every buyer and every seller and asking them all sorts of nosy questions. <laughs> you can look at this one and uh, just have a look at it basically. In this particular case, I do know from discussions with one of the, you figure the agent and the buyer and the seller, or, or maybe two agents, so the parties involved, but with one of the parties involved that there were other considerations in this particular case that make it not a, uh, things like Sue being able to stay on there. So mm -hmm. Not a traditional sale. Not a, no, right, not a traditional arm's length sale. But it's good to have the information that she provided. And the buyer will tell you she bought the property, she did not touch outside. Right, right. The corporation yeah. is separate still. Yeah, she brought the real estate. Okay. 
So I'm sorry. Molly, what, what has happened here? She sold the property. Uh, Sue Bridge sold. Yeah. Wild side. The, the real estate has been sold. Wildside Cottage and Gardens Incorporated as an educational group is still intact. Mm -hmm. so, but the real estate has been sold to this other person. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Sue no longer owns that. Yeah, Allison Sinkler. Allison Sinkler, yep. Lovely and so you inquired to find out if you, whether you could treat it as a, as a arm's length sale. Yes. For our purposes. Right. If she were, if Allison was moving in, that she would be, be a little closer to arm's length. She will be. But she will be. She will be. Yeah. Eventually, she will be. That is yeah. the plan. Yeah. Uh, Once the cottage is done, then she'll. Right. So we'll move down to that. And yeah, Allison will go up to the main house. Mm -hmm. So this is her responding. In, yes. In mails to her as we do all the yes. people involved in transactions. Uh -huh. This is require that they fill out my Right, people are pretty good about it. No. It says house sale verification form buyer. Right, we also have one for the seller, and we have another one for land sale verification for each party. Mm -hmm. Okay, so she's the buyer. She's the buyer of the land, of the real estate. Yes. So the person Sinkler. That's who, yes. That's who's responding to us. Yes. Yeah. So there again, you can initial. Well, this one initial. Ah, uh, yes, please. You prefer the upper right hand corner? That, that just works well, yes. For your lip Yeah. You didn't do the names. So, did we um, get a version of this from Sue Bridges? We did not. No, she we, did not we, respond. Didn't. And sometimes they take, you know, they get put aside. We had him back as late as six or eight, seven months later. And sometimes, of course, never. <laughs> but I know. Give it a try. So was Sue Bridges' property owned by her personally? Was it owned by Initially, the nonprofit yes. Wildside Farm? And it was transferred to Wildside, and I believe it went back to Sue. It went back to Sue right before the sale. Just before the sale, yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for a period of time, Wildside qualified as a charity? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, as an educational yeah. program. Okay. Yes. Um, unfortunately, we have to tax it right at the moment That's because the paper, the annual paperwork that's required to qualify as a an exempt property owner hasn't been filed for several years. Wow. So if we can get back to having that file. Except Wildside doesn't own the file. No, that's true. They're kind of that's um, true. Property. It's gone into private ownership. Right. Good point. Yeah. So it's taxable. So it continues to be taxable. Yes, yes. We have four deeds, very recent deeds. Uh this one is for the last of what Bob and Edie owned, Bob and Edie Horse. They still had several little pieces of land. One has the garage on it, and there are two other small parcels there that were originally flag family land. Mm -hmm. And so they have been transferred over from the Course Investment Trust, which was Edie and Bob's vehicle of ownership, to Leslie Brown, uh, Malcolm's and Winnie's daughter, who's been the, she's been the trustee for that for a number of years. And uh, they're now granted to her individually. They, um, the two smaller ones, I think add up to about $4,000 together. Then the piece with the garage on it is about eighty-four thousand, and so that's what that is. This is uh, Malcolm and Winnie had a reverse mortgage, Malcolm and Winnie Force, and so when they moved out of the house, oh, they have. Uh, they, there are prescribed actions that happened there, and Winnie has signed the house over to 
the Secretary of uh, Housing and Urban Development in Washington as the current owner of the house now. And so they will probably just put it on the market. So the reverse mortgage was through HUD somehow? Yes. It, well, it was through an agent. It was through MetLife Home Loans, a division of MetLife Bank, who assigned it to Na Nation Star Mortgage LLC, who then further assigned it to the Secretary of HUD. So, oh. so it ended up in HUD sense? It ended up there. It made its way through. Yep. And so uh, we may be seeing that coming on the market later this summer. Uh, it was for less than we have it assessed it, have it assessed. Um, During the reverse mortgage data. Yeah, yeah, they give the value here that was recognized in this, in this mm -hmm. document. Then this is kind of just a transfer of convenience that leads to this deed for the Gordon and Daniel Mulvey property at 1700 Main Poland Road. Gordon passed away a couple of years and Danielle has just sold it for $775,500. We have it valued at 658. And this is what appear to be a valid arm's length sale. It was on the open market. She had several offers. This is from someone outside the state but we'll be sending them the forms as well. When, when someone's outside the area, one of the most important questions is, had they been looking around in the Conway area so that they had an acquaintance with Conway values? And that can lead us to say yes or no, it's not a valid price, uh, especially because they come from an area about 45 miles outside DC. Yeah. There may be a problem with that. Bill was talking about it this morning. Oh, they're having a problem with the <clears throat> road situation. The road was discontinued. Chapel Falls Road was, and a, the lawyers a to their saying, driveway. I thought. I mean, uh, beyond their driveway. No, to the the whole thing. The whole thing. And so the lawyers are questioning whether who owns the other half of the road. Normally, when they discontinue a road, each the flutter gets half of the road. According to Bill, talked with Danielle. Danielle and the lawyers are looking into it, so they're the postponed the closing of this property. They had the closing. Well, there's on Monday. They, there's still a problem. Oh, so the 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 issue with the discontinued road you're referencing. In Falls, this property? Yes, the Chapel Falls Road used to go up the left side of the river there up into Asheville. And the lower part of it is, is their driveway also. Then their driveway forks off. And the first so, half of the road was Conway and the second half was no, Asheville. You know, the town line divided it, yeah. yeah. And Asheville divide, uh, discontinued it on their end as well. But the point of that, your information is that that question might affect the value or the even the closing if it hasn't happened. Uh, it, it's, I don't know. It's just I, it's obviously the question that needs to be settled yet. Something the lawyers were going to look into. I mean, I'm assuming if I if I had a house and and turns out after buying it that the road mm -hmm. turns out not to be a road, then I'm responsible for maintaining it or whatever. That no. would influence the value of the house going forward, right? Yes. In a bad way. I mean, it, yes, if there's no access to it. Yeah, or the road is now my driveway. Right. And, and, I, and I don't know, I don't know whose property center of the road you're doing your case. And the people on the other side of the river. I don't know. <coughs> I, mean, I do not know. We would, we would have to go back and see. In everything I've learned, you go back and see if you can determine what the road was taken from originally. For example, if the property that's now Mulvey's, that was all rice farm originally. Right. And if the farm went all the way to the river, then the road was taken off rice farm. And the road would go back to the current owners of rice farm, in this case, the Mulvey's. But in some situations, uh, Hoosick Road, for example, when it was laid out, it may have been a situation where 
two parties owned and something was taken from both. Mm -hmm. you, you have to go back and try and look at, find it if you can possibly. But there may be some cloud of or yes, there issue may. about the value of that land and transaction. Oh gosh. I don't know. That, that, that's that's hearsay. Yes, it yes, may yes. Resolve it. This is a close-up. Um, it may resolve the issue. Yes. So if you, if you see, you don't care. Well, <laughs> I guess we'll find out. To be determined. Plus the sign on that. Um, let's hold that one out and put it in our next meeting folder again. Do you want the other three slides? It will sure. I'm just going to run quickly through these permits. They're already all entered, so I wouldn't even take right. the time. Don't even take the time to initial. Okay, because they're just going to go right into the shredding. Yeah, uh, and actually hold them out and give them to me, because then I'll make sure they're on my list of what we need to see. There's a nice new storage barn there. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. And you got my message. and you got my message about the Windy Ridge property where you thought they were building something yes and they're not it's just the riding rink, riding rink i yeah. think is not yeah. what it a lot is of, a lot of riding. work going into it well they had to level the ground yes that's yeah it's done oh is it down for the most part yeah, yeah. the fencing's open yeah. yeah so nothing to see nothing nothing, to see. nothing to see and here's another nice permit for work on what was eddie's ajax house oh that's a doozy they're ripping down the addition. Yeah, they're tearing down the back addition of the house. And two, two of the additions oh, to the barn. The they said it, it's in poor condition. It only makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Renovating a second floor of that. Oh, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, I have a nice throw with you. So. What happens with this information that we get? I answer it. It gets into property. into the inter yeah, on the individual property card, and we use it to determine whether or not we need to go visit the property, uh, and also to make sure we update the property accordingly. So some of the data might just get entered, but someone gets a note on a calendar somewhere that says we should go visit this property. Mm -hmm. Is that something you do? Yeah. I mean, the majority yep. of what you'll see is replacement windows, right. insulation, yeah, we, upgrading weatherization. electrical, you know, yeah. a new right. ring. Right, generators, hardwired generators. Yes. Yes, yes some solar. But, um, yeah, things that roof, yeah, roof replacement. we put in there, and they're in there, but they're not. They're not significant change to value at all. We right. try and keep track of them so that we can keep track of the condition of the house. But if you... Looking at the building permit feel that it's a substantial project mm -hmm. and requires a visit. One of you guys makes a note to count somewhere. Right. I, I can pull a, I can pull a report from our valuation program that uh, gives me any change in value and that's uh, over a certain amount of money, or just to look at any of them in the past year, and then I can pull out different categories and say, well, we don't need to see air ceiling motorization, we don't need to see the uh, roof replacements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the rest are things that we go and have a look at, or at least inquire about. Sure. I don't make notes for cycles. So this is basically a, a demolition. Yes. Um, did you mean to sign this one? Oh. Oh. Or I already said no, not to ahead. sign them. Yeah, I said, don't don't bother. I said yeah, don't, yeah, don't, don't waste the energy don't in have trying to. Need, okay. don't have to. Everything's already all entered. This was just where the, where the kitchen was. And, uh, the kitchen and there's a little garage back there. Yeah, that was yeah. a little one car garage. Yeah. And then the milk house, I think. And then another the little. Can I take the milk house off? Too? Well, I don't know. It looks That's like it. Two of the additions on the barn. Yeah, two of the additions on the barn. The original barn staying additions are covered.
Oh, I see. It looks slightly different because that's a plumbing inspector. Yes, yes. The different types of permits are set up a little differently from each other. Keep me on my toes trying to see if there's any value indicated or whatever. Okay. Yeah. That's about the number we get with each meeting. Sometimes it'd be more. Being summer, I think things are a little busier. And we keep our eyes out too, you know, as we're going around or mm -hmm. when we know that someone has purchased a house and uh, they aren't moving in yet, things like that. You figure something's going on. Well, we'll we'll stop in and try and make an appointment and see if we can catch up with them. Most not always permits for no, yeah. they're not always permits for everything. <clears throat> To take walls down and reeds to do away with the knot and tools. Doesn't say anything here. It doesn't. No, no. You might just be able to expose it. Yeah. And they, make sure you've disconnected yes. them and anything. Both ends. No, no, yes. Yes. When I had mine down, they didn't. There was no wall. Yeah. I'm assuming that they're going to be replacing all of the wall outlets to, you know, for three crown and. That's what we have there. I don't know. New permits. Okay, that took care of that. Okay, today we had our site visit to the Habitat Humanity House, and I did update the car. Was there any any new listings? No new listings. No new listings. The only things on the market right now are the Tynan House and the Sumner. And the Sumner. Yes, Sumner down on Whateley Road used to have a lot of goats and everything oh, there. The yes, that one, and then the Tynan House is on. Uh, Roaring Brook Road, just it's the last one on the right before Whateley Glen. Used to be Stephen Worth's house. Um, oh, yes. yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah that's right. on the market. Yeah, and so we've I've downloaded all the photos from them. We can use the photos from the advertisements as uh evidence toward our determinations of value, too, and looking at quality Operation and condition just in case we can't get in. Yeah. And so uh, they're both also advertised. They're up on our bulletin board out here in the lobby. Yep. And, uh, and those listings come automatically to us, or do you have to? No, we check on them. We just have an automatic little connection to realtor.com. Things that are for sale by owner, we don't always catch. I try and check that every couple of months or so. Yeah, but a lot of time, a lot of sales that have been happening lately don't even go there. That's right. So That's there. right. It's a quiet agreement between two people. Mm -hmm. right. But if it's a public sale, if it's a public sale, so which of you guys is looking at realtors.com? Usually, well, I do every day. Mm -hmm. You sure. do too. We yeah. both do. Yeah. So check it out on a daily basis. It's pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So I also. With Habitat for Humanity pulled out the regulatory agreement that she spoke of. It is 26 pages long. <laughs> Went through and highlighted the um, portions of it that are of specific interest to us as assessors, and some are of specific interest to the town, the Board of Selectmen, particularly. So I'm going to make sure that a copy of this is sent over to them because um, they would have met with Habitat a year or two ago. And now some of these things are coming into uh, activity. So it's important that they see it. But if you'd like to have a look at just at the little red notes, they verify the taxable value of $200,000 and tell the terms under which 
the new owner, the soon to be owner, will be able to resell and what the limits are on the town's valuations for those purposes too. The town will have first option to buy if he, the new owners, if and when they choose to sell. So that was something I hadn't quite remembered. Good to know. In turn, in return for which the town would have to offer it to sell or rent to a low income situation if they wanted to get into the business of renting. I don't, I don't think so either, but it could be sold to another party who qualified for the, um, within the parameters set at that particular time. Now, isn't there an expiration date of, on the limit of what the tax for value is? Isn't it for so many years? After like it, five years? It's No, it's done, not limited by years. It has a scale, a es tiny escalator scale, apparently, each year. I hope year. so, because in 10 years from now, I can't see still valuing it at $200,000. That's right. That would be ridiculous. Mm. Good for the owner. That's this essentially good. tells me where to look for the formula. So this sales price in this year is really just kind of made up since they're it's not a sale. It, it was that's right. It's an it's an agreed upon value. Um, I don't know how they achieve that value. It has to be something that they, the habitat and for humanities people, have determined based on the house itself mm -hmm. and the land. Because theoretically, I think, they, uh, if they didn't go to a contractor to build it, so it's a lot of volunteer labor and yes. sweat equity. So presumably, that's the right. actual cash put into the thing would be less than if it were a traditional project. Uh, yes. And yes. That, and that, but that isn't so much a factor for evaluation as is the property itself. Right. And what it might sell for. Right. But In there are deed restrictions case. on it. Yes. So that affects the valuation? Yes. Yes, we can't value it over 200. We're restricted to that. Yes, by law. And by the agreement that the town made with, with Habitat. habitat. Mm -hmm. Now you have more site visits coming up tomorrow. Yes, we do. Yeah. Or possibly five. Which are, we're going to go to Drinkers. We're going to go to Erlen. I don't use names. <laughs> we don't use names. Is okay, we're right? going to go to Elm Street. We're going to go to Williamsburg Road. Okay, never mind. South Yorkshire. Never mind. Hither and yawn. Wow. <laughs> we just won't report it. One new house, one addition, one reconstruction. Should we be here tomorrow? Three? Yes. Before three. three. If we can, like order of something like that. Uh, okay. Would be great if you can. Yeah. Russell Breeze in right at three, I hope. And we'll head out. Yeah. It's good if we can all go in one car because then we can talk about things we want to make notes of. When we're out and about like that, we cannot make any determinations of value because we're not in a meeting. Right. But <clears throat> when we we can do what we did this afternoon, sit down and say, we need to remember this. I saw this. Or I'd like to be sure we discuss that. Mm -hmm. okay. And those are of great value to get down right away. Right. Especially yeah. consolidating your. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So today I edited the uh, property record card for the Habitat House and put in the information that we saw today. Um, now, uh, anything that I put in is a presumption until it's been approved by the board. Gotcha. And that's what you want to happen now? That's, yes, we'd like to look at it. Right, change the aluminum vinyl side. Mm-hmm. Electric was changed. Mm -hmm. 
Is there anything I missed? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Let's, let's initial that. What does interior versus exterior mean? It's a condition question. Just in case there's something different, it applies more toward condos, I think, than. But I guess I'm trying to understand the concept. It, I presume I'm reading this correctly. It's interior versus exterior? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's like a relative comparing. And it's, it's comparing one to the other. So if, and if it's rated I ignore in the Tyler it. software is excellent, that means the interior is like more excellent than the exterior. Well, in this case, they're equally good. Okay. Uh, I think comparing the two is an invalid approach. It's a strange concept. I'm it is. Hard to wrap your it head is. Around it. And I haven't seen that it has anything to do with the calculated value. Yeah. yeah. Some of these things we've gone in and tested and tried on a dummy account. And what happens if? Yeah. And what is unfinished area occupancy? One thing. Oh, that, uh, those are two separate lines. Okay. And so it's one family, family occupancy. It's a single family home. Yes. And if they had started a wing and not finished it as of January 1, we would say that that area percentage of the house was unfinished. And the acronym RCNLD. Replacement cost new, less, less depreciation. depreciation. Right. Is that number generated by the software? Yes. Huh. It is. Based on those tables. And yes. And that does not include last year's 8% across the board increase. It's not. It's not. That's another thing I don't like is that that town factor of 8% doesn't show anywhere on the property record card. But when he can't, when we calculate it in against 1.08 times that RCMLD, that is the value that shows up in the total value, final valuation for taxes. And then under dwelling computations, there's percent good. What does that mean? Uh, let's see, is that the 87? This, well, it's 100, then yeah. it's 87. 100%, it's 100% good, it's all finished. Ah, that's... Now, 87 is the factor I had to put in to get it to end up at 200,000. <laughs> the dwelling house was coming in the, with the dwelling value. The total value was coming in at 217 for the property. And so I worked the figures until I found that an 87% adjustment to that dwelling brought the total value down to 200,000. Which, because of the nature of this property, were required to yes. stay under. Came in right on the button, which surprised me very happily. Mm. I'm going to keep that one. Okay. Make sure I get it over to. It's all this permit information you guys entered into the system based on building permits we received. This tax class exempt will it remain exempt once the people take they won't once they take that's right as soon as it's it. transferred to the owner uh it'll become that's much taxable for the remainder of the fiscal year supposedly they'll sort out the figures at at uh, closing mm -hmm. if our tax rates but known by then they can sort it out at closing and it should work out about right because they were saying september or october for transfer to the new owner mm -hmm. yep how does that work? If the, base, if the taxes are based on January 1. The taxes are based on January 1. For the valuation. But for the, the valuation and the tax bill is for the fiscal right. year. So if they so you look at July 1 and you simply divide the tax bill into 365 parts. Right, right. So and prorate it. If they own it for a few days at the end of the year. Right. They get that piece of the. Yes. They get taxed that piece of the valuation. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. It's more likely that the habitat will own it for say three months roughly out of the year and that they'll own it for the other nine, but it gets prorated down by to a daily basis. Hmm. 
Uh, do I need to sign that or you just take a slip? Well, the question you want to is, vote on. Yeah. Well, is um, be a motion. yeah, there will have to be a motion, but let Russ look at it too. Janice, how far can I see? You can tell their voices apart. Their voices are way different. Uh, Jamis O. Tucker. I mean, the question is whether we agree with this. Yes. That's, yes. That's basically exactly. I've, I've added the portions so <laughs> forth, but you didn't have on there before the decks. Right. Updated um, on the things. That, yep. The one I saw this afternoon. Yes. <laughs> yeah, afternoon. it was. Yeah. Just this afternoon, George. Yeah. <laughs> yep. There's no way that we actually, I mean, I know we're limited to the 200,000, yeah. but there's no place that we can actually put a figure that we actually would have value to that. Well, we could we can write it in easily enough. There's a notes section. Sure, there's a notes there. Uh, I can tell you what it. So in a way, it's irrelevant because of the deed restrictions. Yes. Limit, but it's stale a, it's the house interest to right. other people in you know, similar financial circumstances and so forth. Right, but if it comes up as a comp, right, if somebody wants to a, use it as a, a comp, you want the actual assessed value, not the as a, what? a ah. comp, a comparable. Oh, if oh, someone oh. uses it as a comparable house, you, you want what the real value would be, not the restricted. So someone might look at that and say, "Oh, I have a house just like that." Right, but. This is artificial. Why is mine so much higher? Right. 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 And all that's what we can say. Well, this one should be this one, which is comparable to yours. Yeah, yeah. If yeah the full calculated value under those terms is two hundred seventeen thousand seven hundred. Am I applying that eighty-seven percent to the house? We get it to come out to exactly two hundred thousand. Do you want that put into the note somewhere? Yes, absolutely. Also put it in the notes here at the computer, but they don't print out. <laughs> well, it won't print out on the property card either, but it'll no. be there if we look. And if that's going to be the card that we keep, we can hand write it. I have my red pen. <laughs> so that number that is more useful for someone doing some kind of research. Yes. Um, as opposed to tax yep. purposes. Right. Yep. And certainly for anyone who wants to do a per square foot value analysis. So, have we a motion to accept the card as presented? Um, are you making that motion or asking? Hmm? Are you making, making that motion it? or asking? I, for a motion? I, I will make a motion. But if you if you added just now, is that what you did? Just add yes. data to that yes. card that indicates a theoretical market value price. Yes. Okay. The market value outside contra of contract. Is to seventeen seven hundred. Yeah. Okay. So that fulfills Russ's request. I and it, I think it's good to have it on there. Yeah, and the other stuff that you changed seems to be appropriate. I will make that motion. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I will second it. Any further discussion or questions? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I assume you want initials. Oh, uh, yes, please. Good. Great. That's a nice bit of new growth for us, too, um, for this year, for the entire house, basically. Comes uh, in as new growth. Now, next we have new growth being something that wasn't taxed before. Next we have our motor vehicle excise abatement applications. There are two today. 
Um, both have been properly submitted with their supporting uh, material. If you trade a car, sell a car, take it off the road, take it, close the registration, you could receive an abatement for the balance of the year um, in which it was taxed. You, you, know, you pay the tax in January for the year ahead. So if you do something with it now, you can receive an abatement for that partial portion of the year. So those are the applications. Unless, and it, unless it comes out less than five bucks. That's right. right. We, okay. Yes, Jan doesn't have to deal with those. So theoretically, if I paid my excise taxes in January and then sold both my cars. Yes. Then I, could, it, I could fill out one of these forms and yes. get sort of prorated reimbursement. Exactly. Because I'm going to get another bill for the replacement car. Yes. I can fly it. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Price. Many places to sign on those. Yes, we start with signing the the front of that form down in the lower right corner as accepting that individual application is correct. So, and as I recall from my reading, they need to prove both that they sold the car and that it was unregistered. They, they're showing they're showing on that one. If you look at the page after what you're looking at, they're showing the plate that's been put onto a new car. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. They gave a copy of the old registration and then in that particular it. case, they moved the plate. That doesn't always happen. But the registration on this car was canceled. Yeah. Yeah, when I uh, bought my new car, I couldn't keep my old plate. Really? Yeah. Oh. The, uh, oh, because it's electric? Yeah. Oh, you have to have that, e you have have that, that fancy EV plate. plate. Yeah. <laughs> They're trying to promote. EVs or something. Probably. That's funny. I always thought there was an E on the end of report. I think there is. Yeah, that would be me. No. I was, I was, <laughs> if, it's in, with the if e. it's in red, I was, I'm the one who wrote it with her at the desk. So I was writing it out so fast that I just didn't put the E on. red pen? There we go. And today is. Are we signing these? Yes. So, yeah. uh, down on the bottom there. Oh, we're right. Official place. Okay. Well, that's right. This is official application. Right. Not something crossing our desks. Right. But then. Is, uh, it wants the date as well. Yeah. What is the date? Seven five. With you. So I'm tired, guys. So we should try. There we go. Then, in support of those, we have the two certificates that will go out to the owners uh, as their notification that the application has been accepted. Which we have to do within 10 days of the action. Of the yes. Start. Yeah. There. And then we also have the final summary that goes to Jan and the accountant. You want two signatures on this? Yes. You well, sign just two, me on two the mm -hmm. And this is the summary that goes to Jan, the tax collector, and the accountant. So she knows how to adjust. Exactly. Taxes. Their figures, yeah. Yeah. Motor vehicle overlay uh, does not come out of overlay, but they still have to be corrected, of course, the figures. Okay, the next is other business. Do we have any other business? 
Oh, I did uh, last week. I did watch the um, program on the evaluation program the, uh, presentation, Zoom presentation from recap, QDS. Oh, 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 oh. From QDS about the new program they're offering, the evaluation program they're offering for Massachusetts. I must say that I liked it a lot. I liked it better than I have liked the Patriot program because it is much less complicated, fewer bells and whistles, and it reminds me very much of the state program that we used for almost 20 years in love. And that was very reliable and uh, very clear, um, completely out in front of you as far as being able to show a property owner how their value was, in, was uh, derived. And so I do plan to talk to the people in Egremont, which was the test town for it. Although they ran on the presentation, they didn't have any time really to speak. And I have a couple more questions for the fellow who's in charge of it at QDS. But um, half a dozen other towns watched it with me. And I'm going to talk to a couple of them as well to were see they, what their were thoughts they, were and what they, questions they had. Were they island towns? Yes. <clears throat> so others are interested in watching them. Yes. So I will be following up on that before our next meeting. Um, so QDS currently doesn't serve any other Massachusetts, any Massachusetts towns or any other Egremont. They, well, they do treasurers and tax collectors. They, but they do, all, they do a lot of treasurers and tax collectors. Wow, okay. and, Conway, and they supply um, calculation, billing, and printing services for, for us and other towns. And uh, of course, the beauty is that the two programs would mesh Seamlessly. Understood. Patriot also meshes without problems with QDS. QDS is who is currently creating stuff and printing and mailing your tax bills now. Yeah. You said QDS has a lot of experience doing assessing work in other states. Yes, they've been doing Rhode Island. They've been working in Rhode Island and Connecticut for 40 years or more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I presume the Department of Revenue has approved these people. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't be shopping around. That's right. That's right. We're double checking that too. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so, so that was. So how about dollar wise? We're comparing Patriot. Uh, these people and what we're paying now. We're... Right. They didn't off. They didn't give figures because he said it's going to depend partly on your number of parcels. So I'm writing to the fellow who is in charge of that end of it to get that information from him. It sounds like it's a much less expensive program. Patriot came in over $10,000. So that's where my fear comes in. How much is Tyler? Because when Tyler is, was, well, the state paid for our conversion to that as a return for the fact that they were just continuing our program. Mm -hmm. How long have you had Tyler? Three years. They paid? Part of all three years? No. They paid for the conversion, they paid for the first year. So last this year we're on we paid two years. We're now on on our own basically. Yes, with that four thousand dollar a year subscription. Um this sounds like it's going to be much less expensive to start with and a lower annual subscription fee, mm -hmm. but completely free um support, unlimited free support. Uh, to be true. So that's, that's important no, to find out. It, yeah. It's like one of those things where you have multiple companies offering the same product and they're all about the same <laughs> price. And then you have this one who says, I'm going to do it for less than it. It kind of makes you go. I know. Are you really going to do I know. it? Or... And I'm very much aware that this is how <laughs> the funds that would be spent. You know, we did a town meeting. Our voters did agree to set the money aside for this. Mm -hmm. Should we go ahead? I presume the conversion is one price. Yes. And then the then, annual. Then the, yes. Yeah. 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 One of the things that 
going to Patriot would involve an extra fee every year of $2,500 for them to support it in their server. Our because and our we, server can't handle it, and Rory Cohen, our IT. Um, <laughs> do we know if our server can handle this one? Guru, I'm getting there yet. Yeah, because I have to get the hardware specs. But, uh, you know, as he said, it would cost way more than that for us to begin to be able to upgrade mm -hmm. to what they require. So, this is another question. All right, all right. Yeah. Can we host right. it or we're, not? Where Tyler is like a web based program, so we don't have to worry about it. Right. So right. All yeah. So uh, there are all these questions that are coming into it. And then, boy, I welcome any and every question to ask. Not even sure what to ask. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, if you'd like, we can get together and you can look at the Patriot presentation. Mm -hmm. I have it here. That was and yeah, I, know I, it didn't, was, I didn't get much out of it. I know. That. I, it, was, it was very And then very also, fast. this other one is going to be online as well. I know the Patriot presentation was not. It was very poor. Yes. It was geared as a big sales pitch, but not talking in detail about. No, it was just, it, it does this, it's like you pulled on this, mm -hmm. it does this, and you just like zipped right through it without any real substance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a quick overview of what it can do. Right. Right. So, um, the only other thought I. That word with still convinced we want to change is that where we're <laughs> I mean this this new one is kind of we were sort of convinced that we want to go with Patriot but now this new one I mean where do we I know where do we become and I mean, make the it's final a, decision it's a major it's a major project it is change. It's, yes it's it's a big expense and it's it's, well, it's a lot of it's work. It's a lot of work. It's a ton of hours. It's a ton of oh, yes. hours. And um, it's a ton. And <laughs> I'm scared because I can live at eight hours a week that I'm paid for. Anything over eight hours, I don't get paid for. And I, I know. I know. Well, I put some money into that quote that we did at the town meeting to cover extra hours for me. Yeah. But can't be used for me. From the, no, from the, <laughs> well, extra hours, extra office hours was what it was. Just, just for. George's information was Tyler one didn't come over. It didn't convert really all the bells and whistles. Uh, <laughs> it left us a lot of blank pieces of paper. It didn't exactly all the data did not convert. It didn't, it didn't it, convert. The programs didn't communicate very well no, with they each didn't. other during the process. So we're still we're still under that problem. We're still finding those things. Those so glitch those glitches are areas that we can't see clearly. But we have to put in the, the we, we have to put in the hours and the time to fix all those glitches before, before we, we try to change. That's so right. Heard again, otherwise you're glitching or to, and to, or to identify them very clearly so that we know how to check the new data. And I take it we're having this conversation because the pilot's performance in the last three years has not been adequate. No, it is not. And there's some things in it that many problems. Uh, there, oh, for example, even though it was supposedly designed to work in Massachusetts, it did not calculate ch chapter 61B values correctly. We were having to do those, I was having to do all of those accounts by hand mm -hmm. and backfill the information and make sure it didn't overwrite it. So that's one example of just its inadequacies. Yes. Uh, another is in changing addresses. Oh. If one person owned more than one property but sold only one parcel, you went in and changed the ownership and address, and it automatically changed them all. Oh, no. You have to make sure to clear out the owner code. Yes, so we've learned how to deal with code. some of these things. So, so. yeah, we've, that, I mean, and that kind of makes sense because an owner code is connected to every piece of property that owner owns. So when we changed it was initially the owner, owner code. It was initially. Connected. It just reflects everywhere. So you have to make it sure. It doesn't give you great confidence in the software. Precisely. Those little time bombs are littering all over the place. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So the um Patriot presentation, is that something that's online or yes. is that a recording? It's it's online. And so um, you can send me the I thought it was a recording. Or is it a recording? They had a basic demonstration online, and then we saw a fuller one. 
uh, I'll find it. Okay. Um, and you said that what you saw. They uh, said they were reporting it would make it available. So when yes. that becomes available, you can show it to me. Yes. Well. Yeah. And Patriot is used by Warner to Montana, Massachusetts. And they've been here for. And Patriots. Oh, Patriots been in use in Massachusetts for decades. Oh, yeah. Right. But, yeah. Right. They were purchased out. It's now actually uh, a different name. Yeah, it's a big corporation. That it's a now a national part of a national corporation. Which makes but they have a Massachusetts um, product that's been tried and true and, and updated a great deal. It's the tried and true. That yes. Yes. So yeah. at some point, presumably, we will be asking at Patriot and maybe QDS for proposals. Yes. Specific to Conway and no mm -hmm. specific price. Yeah. Uh, Vision is going out of the valuation program business. Um, there aren't too many others out there. Do you have some sort of timetable in mind for so, when you we would like to do this? As far as the time of year in which to do it, for me, the best time would be to start in the fall after our bills have gone out. It's usually October one? Yes. 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 And that way it would be ready for the next year. Right. At that point, we're busy with abatements and exemptions and chapter stuff, but there's a bit more time to do with deal with this kind of thing. How much and it would give, give us would six or eight months, eight months. To go out and check all the properties ahead of time yes. and then start the new program mm -hmm. and find all its glitches. Yeah, we basically have 10 months, say, in which to get it completely done okay. before the and next billing. Longer than that. That's time. Yeah. But you had a lot of problems with, yes. with the brain transfer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so ten month, nine or ten month window that presumably start, um, you know, in October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do we have anyone joining us? No. Okay. So no public comments. Other business from you. I'm, no. <laughs> Pretty well with what you've had today. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not overwhelmed, but well. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I, 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 I this new outfits out of day, possible. I'm not sure that we should hold up on the other one until we. That's what I'd like to do. More. Yeah. So we have a good clear picture. One thing that you said that struck a chord in me was the idea that it it sounds like it's it's not overly written. Yes. You no, know, it's like Microsoft Word. It's a wonderful program, but it's industrial strength. And there are days that I just want to write a memo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, need, little notepad. I don't need Microsoft Word to do that, and I don't understand half of what it does anyway, right? Because I never need it or never use it. And, mm -hmm. I can see where some of these people writing software for something like assessing are trying to serve towns or cities way bigger than that. Yes, and that have vastly greater needs for, especially the commercial and industrial properties and all this. So Do I can we see know if this one is going to calculate chapter values? Was that a question during the presentation or anything? It was said that it's all set. So that's one of my questions for Egremont. Did, did they? I don't want to bring this on, but did, did they talk about effective age? Yes. Does it calculate it's gone back. It's gone back to the old system. Does it calculate automatically? Yes, from a graph, a chart that you put in, and it takes the physical age and the condition, determines effective age, and that's what's used in the calculation. So it's Which how we wanted we it. it right? Yes. Yes. Big plus right there. That is no kidding. <laughs> yes, that that's a huge uh, philosophical yes. What do we use effective age for? Effective age is used in calculating a property value. Uh, a house built in eighteen what seventeen sixty eight seventeen seventy whatever whatever. Uh, it's still standing, still being used, still strong, mm -hmm. but 
it certainly is not does not have that effective age. It has a modern kitchen. It has had work done. It's been insulated, sure. so on and so forth. So its effective age may be something more like forty or fifty years, and it yeah. still has some time to go. Mm -hmm. So effective age is what should be used in saying, okay, the house is this old, even though we're recognizing it that it's you know two hundred and fifty years old. And so that's very important. Yes, it, it speaks to the question of how has the house been updated over the years? Yes. And, it, and, and condition? How well is it, how well is it, it being kept? Because if it was in the same condition it was originally built, that would speak to the, the market value. That's right. One way or the other. That's right. Some people might really We like have that. one one instance in the town where someone has brought in a house from uh, late late seventeen hundreds. They was dismantled, I think, and re the exterior was rebuilt, and they still have all the old paneling and everything. They would started to put it together, and it's going to be an extremely careful mm -hmm. re reconstruction, not reproduction, reconstruction. And so, the uh, it hasn't been finished yet. Uh, had a long time and long time project. But um, but Tyler does not yeah. have an effective age. We um, have to put it in. To put in an effective age individually. Individually for each one, and we don't. There's no real place to get it. Yeah, <clears throat> we've mean, we've tried looking at. We're going to make sure that we're consistent based on our old chart. Mm. So because that's manually. the only we have calculating or estimating effective yeah age. they brought over some but they also changed some but bringing over some when you do updates it's not updating the effect that's right and it should mm -hmm. that's been a huge so, uh, another, another black eye for tyler yes mm -hmm. yeah and you're saying the other two potential replacements do offer effective yes. age calculation yes yes um they handle it much more closely to the way that we always did. The it's also interesting to note that of the roughly 70 towns that were still using the old state system when they discontinued it for fiscal 21, um, some went to other things like Patriot right away. And so there ended up being, I think, 55 or 60 that went to Tyler. And that number is down to about 30. Hmm. Because the others have voted with their feet, jumped out midstream, yeah, and moved. Yeah. Okay. Well, when you get Patriot and QDS mm -hmm. information, I'd be happy to look at it. Yeah. I'd like you to see QDS too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything else? Anything in the mind? No, but we meet here tomorrow a little ahead of three o'clock. Just ahead of three o'clock. Yep. Okay. So, Seeing no other business before the board at this time, I move to adjourn at 625. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're done. See you tomorrow afternoon.